So the Tao Tao scooter rim just came in. Here you can see the busted one. And here is the new one. So with this new one, it looks like I'm going to have to switch some parts over. Of course, the brake rotor is going to have to be switched over. Before I started working on the wheel, I went to bend the forks. So here I just had to turn the torch on and bend them a little bit and hammer them. I tried hammering it before I heated it, but it didn't really do anything. It just kind of nicked up the steering stem. I'm not the best with the torch, but I figured I'd give it a try. I'm sure that loud popping sound when I shut the torch off meant I was doing it wrong, but I don't know what happened there. I think I shut them off in the wrong order. It worked a little, but I almost went too far, so I had to straighten it back out. New front forks are like $85, so I wanted to fix these ones. It's a little straighter now, but it's not perfect. I think it'll be okay enough to get the bearings in and it won't wobble. So now it's time to put it back together and see if they'd fit. I wrapped all the electronics in plastic bags because the plastics weren't on there. Once I got everything unwrapped, I put the forks in, and there's one bearing that goes at the bottom and one at the top, and then you twist the large nut down. The small nut just goes down to lock the large nut on, sort of like on the coilover kit on the cars. So now I had to take the brake disc off of the old rim and put it on the new one, and this was pretty tough. Tougher than I thought. Just appears. Some type of Loctite on there that was keeping them in. So now I get the second bolt out of three out. And it was tough, but it wasn't bad. And then the third one strips out. The Allen key was the right size. It worked on the other two, but not on the third one. So I decided to drill it out. I tried Allen keys after I drilled some of it out, but that didn't work. So I just kept drilling it until I finally got it off. It didn't matter if I damaged that rim because it was unusable anyways, as long as I didn't damage the brake disc. All right, so these are the bolts that were holding the brake disc in and this one stripped out so what I had to do was drill it with a drill bit and I went to the next size bigger and it it got the bolt out so I'll put it on with two bolts for now and probably find another one somewhere around here next was taking the tire off which is pretty straightforward just three flathead screwdrivers and keep prying at it Try not to damage the tire. Here, I just got lucky by turning my back to the R32, kind of protecting that. And, of course, hit the camera.
that's broken all the way through. Just mangled, hit a curve, probably something like this. So I think that's everything for taking off this wheel. Here you can see the shiny new wheel. Just looking over everything. Old bearings, new blue bearings. Let me change the valve stem over. And that's it. So I had to go inside and look up how to remove the valve stem from the old rim. Because it's a tubeless tire. So one thing I saw was they used a hook. So I made a hook out of a coat hanger. Which is a good way to do it. So this would be sitting in here like this. The hook comes through, you push it up next to it. Hook it inside and then pull back out. Okay, so the way I ended up getting the valve stem in was taking this Allen key, pushing it down in the back of the valve stem until it hits the metal part. So you want to get a valve stem big enough to catch the metal part and not go down into it. Hopefully it didn't damage it. But that's the way I figured out how to get the valve stems back in because it was giving me trouble. So we got that done. Tires aired up. I'm take this stuff off of the R32. There we go. Put the brake disc on with the two bolts I had, except for the one I drilled out, so I'll need to get one more of those. Next was the brake caliper. And then once you put that back on, you have to put the rim in and line it up with a little spacer and then put the speedometer on the opposite side of the brake caliper. So it took a few tries to get everything all lined up. And I switched the bolt to this side and it worked good. So what I'm going to do about these broken plastics is just drill some holes and then zip tie that together. And the same thing down here. So, I got this piece back on, screws in right here, and then I put the ignition piece on, trim. So this, a lot of the tabs are broke down here, so I'm probably going to drill holes here and here, zip tie this nice and tight together, and then I'll put the nose on, and the side pieces, and we'll be good to go. So I got one screw on this side, but over here, there's this screw hole that goes to the back, and then there's this screw hole, and then there's this screw hole, and they're all broken. So putting screws here isn't going to do anything. That's another zip tie problem, that'll zip tie fix. There's nowhere to screw this side on. It's all shattered off here at this screw point. 
so right now I have one screw and it looks like I can get a couple more on this side. So I have everything fixed right now except these two front plastics. They're not on there. Got this nose back together. Got it all zip tied up. And I still have to bend this exhaust back so I can check the oil and see what's up with that. But I'm gonna take it for a ride right now. All right, so I got the Tau Tau fixed and going again. This is like the first test ride since all the zip ties and repairs. Gotta watch out for the snow. But yeah, it seems to ride okay. I haven't really went wide open yet. But so far so good. Let's see if I can make this turn here one-handed. Alright, so there's the Tau Tau, and the front fender doesn't hit anymore, so we're all good there, I'll put those plastics on tomorrow.